Hello, hello, everyone. I hope everyone is having a fabulous Wednesday today. It is August, so I hope everyone's also gearing up for fall, fall florals, fall events, all the fall things. Um, we're going to give it just a couple of minutes here to see um, who decides th to show up live. Um, and then, of course, after the webinar is over, um, we will also send a follow-up email with the full video recap over the next couple of days. But I appreciate everyone that is joining us today live. And uh, today's topic is going to be on our new features, which are going to be the new invoicing features such as email scheduling and uh, email analytics and a couple of other new things sprinkled into that area. So I also just want to kind of start off by mentioning that these features are part of the details invoicing. If you're not already connected with details invoicing, we highly recommend that you do. Um, this just gives you some added options as far as receiving payments directly through the site. Um, you'll be able to send the invoice off to your client with a link to also sign the proposal so they can do both of those things at once. Um, any payments that you receive directly through this area will automatically be logged over in the payment section of your event. Um, so lots of great options here and we're going to go over some of those today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. For anyone who does not know, my name is Brandy, and I am the support director here at Details Blower Software. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen here, and then I do ask that everybody just keep your questions either till the end, or you can also put them into the chat. Um, I do have my colleague Crystal on today, and so she's going to be monitoring that chat area. So if you have any questions, you can always put them there. Or of course, like I said, you can wait until the end and then I will have kind of an open Q&A if you have any additional questions. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna head on over into our tips and tricks webinar event here. So for today's uh, lesson, I just went ahead and created just a brief worksheet here for this event. All I did was add some quantities in there just so that we had that grand total. Um, when you're inside of an event, the way that you're gonna access these features is gonna be under financials. And the very first thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually visit that payments page. So if you have your default payment schedule set up in your company financials area, um, if you're not familiar with that section, that's gonna be on the main menu under company and then financials, and you can set up your default payment schedule or how you regularly take your payments, and that's gonna correlate into each one of your events. So for me, I have my retainer due now or the time of signing, so that's gonna be today. My second payment is gonna be 120 days out from the uh, event date, and then my third payment is gonna be 30 days prior to the event date. If you come on this page and these dates are not blue, they're gonna be gray initially. You'll just wanna click into that box, confirm the date, click done, and do that for each one of the payments that are on here. Uh, and that's gonna be very important, especially for the scheduling of your emails. So just to keep that in mind. So I'm gonna save at the bottom here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head on over to our invoicing tab. So the invoicing tab um, already existed prior to these new updates, but of course now we've got some additional options here that you guys can utilize. One of those features is going to be the auto send feature. But before we get into that, just to go over some things at the top here, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see details about your client and the event itself over here under the invoice details. Um, the invoice settings is where you're going to find your invoice number. Um, I do occasionally get asked if you can change that invoice number. You absolutely can. You'll just click into that box and you can adjust that here. 
Um, or of course, details automatically creates one for you. So if you'd prefer to just keep that invoicing number, you can do that as well. Um, right below that is where you're going to see your details app fee. So signing up for Stripe and uh, maintaining the account is completely free. It's free to sign up. And all of these features that you're going to see today are included in that. Uh, the only associated fees, just as with any payment processing platform, are going to be the associated fees for processing the actual payments. Um, your fees are going to be different depending on what plan you are on. Um, we do have legacy rates that were added way back from the beginning. Um, we've got our business plan, our annual plan, and then our enterprise plan. So right now, as it stands, I have mine set for that 1.25 and then um, Stripe's fees of 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. If you have an annual or enterprise plan, those are going to be a little bit different. Um, and if you have any questions on those fee amounts, just let me know and I can absolutely follow up with you after our class today. Um, right below that is going to be an admin fee. So you don't have to use the admin fee. And if you come on this page, you might see zero if you're not using it. Um, the admin fee is going to be a fee that you can add on to the entirety of your event, your total, if you will. And that's your total after taxes. So I have mine set at 5%. This is the way that I'm offsetting the fees that I have associated with processing those payments. In details, there are a variety of ways that you can offset that fee. Um, I have chosen to use the admin fee as I feel like it's going to be the easiest. It's just a fee that's added on to the entirety of the event. And then I already know that my payments are accounting for that percentage. You can also certainly do um, a convenience fee or you can do uh, a fee on the worksheet itself. So if you're familiar with that fees section, you'll just add a line and then you can enter in that fee there. So the admin fee is the one that's going to show up here, though. Uh, right below that, I have an option to show proposal link. So in details, you have a proposal link and then you have an invoicing link. But of course, we want to make things as easy as possible for not only you guys, but for your customers. So the way that we've done that here is to allow you to add that link for the proposal onto this invoice as well. That way, when your client gets that invoice, they're not only going to be able to make their payments, but they're also going to be able to accept and sign the proposal as well. So just kind of getting everything all out in one foul swoop. And then below that, we have added the option to either show or hide the event staff total section. Uh, if you're familiar with that section, it lives on the worksheet and it's basically an itemized way to do your labor. You can put in each type of team member, um, how many of the, each of those team members will be working, the hours at which they're working, and then the rate at which they're working and whether or not that's taxed. Um, we did have some people that wanted to show that information and some people that didn't. And so that option now lives here for you to choose one or the other. In the top right-hand corner of your invoice settings here is where you're gonna find that invoice note. So for those of you who have been using our invoicing predating all of these updates, um, you had an option to adjust your invoice note along with your emails, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, but that note area has now moved here. So you'll be able to adjust that note and it will live directly on the invoice itself. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click this view button here to show you guys what that will look like. Perfect, so um, this is where your invoice note will live right down here at the bottom. So that's where that information will live. All right, so moving on over here on the right hand side is where you're going to find that invoice link. For those of you that currently have a subdomain or as you may know it better, a custom URL, that custom URL will live right here in this link. Um, before this update, it was already living in your proposal link and on your forms if you're connected with our form builder feature and uh, your selected subdomain was right there in those links. And that is now also present within your invoicing link. 
Um, anybody who does not already have a subdomain, I would highly recommend that you do so because not only is that subdomain going to be included in these links, which uh, will you know, definitely create more brand identity. Um, it makes your clients feel safer knowing that they're going to a location that has um, you know, something similar to maybe your website link or that has your company name in it. Um, but you'll also have some added features, which we're going to go over in just a second. So the added feature one is that it's going to be included in your link here. Um, this area is also going to be where you can copy that link if you would prefer to send that um, externally outside of details. So if you already have maybe like a, an email system that you use, you can absolutely do that as well. And then, of course, right below that, you've got your view buttons and your send now, which is going to send that email directly to the client. If for any reason you ever do not see this send now option, that will mean that you have not entered in an email for your client. So just be aware of that. So talking about the emails that get sent to our clients, where do we adjust them? What do they look like? Things like that. So to see that information, we're going to go over here to the change email content. And then in addition to that, you can see it in this way. However, at the top of your event, you're also going to see here an email settings option, and that's also where that information will live. So in your general tab here, you're going to find all of your company information. So right now we've got our details information here, um, your company logo, and all of that information is automatically going to populate over from your company info page. And again, that's going to be found under your main menu under company and then info. Below that, though, is where you're going to be able to customize your emails, uh, like your email send address. So on the left hand side, you're going to see an area where you can customize your from email. And that's going to be uh, right now we have it set up as event name, but you can uh, change that to you know, details flowers or however you'd like that to uh, present to your client. Then down below that is where that custom URL is going to come into play. If you don't have a custom URL, the default will be here. It's uh, like details.flowers. And if you do have a, a custom subdomain, then this can actually be included in your from email. That's also going to allow you to adjust the uh, area here where I currently have info. If you don't have a subdomain, it will automatically default to system at details flowers. So just a couple of important things there. I highly recommend that you get that subdomain so that way you can have that custom email that gets sent out to your client as well. On the right-hand side, same thing. You're going to be able to adjust um, the name and then the email that any emails that uh, your clients reply to go to. So if I were to send out that invoice email and my client were to hit reply and send me a message back, it's gonna go to whatever email I have listed here in my email reply to area. Next over here on the left-hand side, we're first gonna go over to our invoice ready email. So that's where we're going to find the area where I can customize my email message, my subject line, heading, subheading, and then any of the content for that email itself. Um, all of these fields are customizable. You'll just click into them to adjust. This is going to be what's sent if you click send now. And it's also going to be what's sent if you have a scheduled email that gets sent out uh, regarding an upcoming payment. On the left, you'll also see your invoice thank you. Once your client has made a payment, that's going to send them automatically this thank you email. And again, you can customize all of the fields that you see here to say whatever verbiage you like best. All right, so going back over to our financials in the invoicing area.
perfect. So on this page here, down at the bottom, you'll now see this area for auto sending. Um, if we click on the plus schedule, we're going to see the different lines show up here. So starting with my retainer, I'm probably just going to go ahead and click that send now button for my retainer. Um, but of course, if your retainer payment is not due immediately like that day, you can absolutely schedule that payment to go out, um, you know, one day before, two days before that payment is due. However, for me, I'm going to go ahead and skip on over to that second payment because I've already sent my client the initial uh, payment that was due today. And I'm going to set that for three days before that payment is due. But of course, I know, at least I know myself, if you sent me an email three days before I had to pay it, I'm probably going to forget by the time it's due. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule a second email that's going to be sent out one day before that payment is due. However, we all know that things slip through the cracks. Maybe they forgot to make their payment. They didn't get my email in time or whatever it happens to be. I can also go in here and schedule a reminder payment. So I'm going to choose after in this case, and I'll go ahead and do two days after. So I'm going to give them that little grace period before I nudge them again. Um, on the payments that are supposed to be sent out after the due date, the system is going to recognize if that person has already made the payment. So don't think that because you scheduled it, even if they make the payment on April 18th, it's still going to send that uh, reminder payment two days later. It won't. It's your reminder payment in case they didn't pay. Uh, and that's only going to be if that payment was not made. So you'll do this for each one of your different emails that you want to send out. Personally, I'm just going to kind of follow that same outline for each one of the payments here. And then I'll go ahead and save. You'll also see that to the right of each one of these payments, it's going to tell me the actual day. So uh, what is two days or three days before this date? It's going to go ahead and show that information here. So that way, if you wanted to do like a preemptive, maybe, I don't know, 20 days prior, hey, just to let you know that your payment is coming up on however, whatever date, then you can go ahead and see that information here as well. All right, perfect. So now that we've got all of that information set up, next, let's go ahead and head over to our email list. One of the other things that was added in this release was this more drop down menu. So, for anyone who um, has like a smaller screen or maybe you're just working off of a laptop, then you now have this more drop down menu. So, any of these different options that you see up here that you didn't previously see when you got in a smaller screen, they're now going to live in the more drop down menu. So, we're going to head on over to the email list area. So the email list area is where you're going to be able to see the analytics for these emails. Did my client receive it? Did they open it if they did? How many times did they open it? Did they click on anything? You know, what date did it actually send? Things like that. So right here, I've just gone ahead and set myself to test emails to get this uh, ready for our webinar today. Just following this first one here, it's going to let me know the two email. You can also see that in between my first and second email, I had gone in to switch this client's uh, email address. You can absolutely do that. And of course, it will keep track of any of those changes here. Then it's going to show you your subject line. So if that maybe made any changes in between um, or if you had something different for this client versus your normal emails, you can absolutely see that here. You can view the invoice. This is where you're gonna be able to see if it was sent. So of course we know that sometimes you send an email and uh, the email bounces or the client's uh, inbox is full so it never reaches them or anything like that. You'll always be able to see whether or not it was successfully sent from this page. You'll also see if it was successfully delivered. So maybe it was sent, but their email provider never picked up that send. 
you can see that here as well. You'll also see the dates that each of those happened. Next, you'll be able to see if they opened it and if they did, how many times did they open it? Um, so that way you can see, you know, if they've at least interacted with the email or have any idea that that payment is coming up. And if they've clicked. So did they click on anything? If they did, likely they clicked on that to view the invoice or make the payment or whatever. Um, you'll also see any bounces, any complaints, meaning that they marked your email as spam. And then any errors. Errors could be a broad spectrum of things, but they will definitely not be that it was bounced or that they uh, marked it as spam it will be one of the other errors that can occur during email sends. You'll also see your from email. So again, if any of that information has changed at any point as you're sending out these emails, you can see that information. And then of course, over here in the history, if you double click on this, you can actually see the full breakdown of, okay, it was sent at this time. It was delivered at this time. This is when they opened it. For me, I opened this immediately and I opened it a couple of times. But um, you can see all of that information here in a full outline. So that way you know when those interactions happened as well. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, you're also going to be able to um, filter out these emails. So for example, if I want to see all of the ones where they actually clicked, I can click on that too, and it will go in and sort that. I can also go in and see, okay, I want to see all of the ones that were just specifically sent to this email. Then I can do that. Um, so just some additional information here for you to search, especially if you're, let's say, 10 emails deep with this person and you wanted to go and find the analytics for a specific one, you can absolutely do that either through the stats or by the filters here in the middle. All right, so that's going to be the information on a per event basis. However, if I go over here into my main menu under company, you'll notice that you also have those options here in your company settings. So I'm actually first gonna start over in the financials area. I'm sure that right now I've got a mix of people who may already be connected with Stripe. Um, and then some people maybe are just looking to get more information on that to see if it's something that they want to do. If you're not already connected with Stripe, you're gonna to come to that company financials page and right up here at the top, you're gonna to have a button that says connect with Stripe. And once you click that button, it's gonna walk you through the process of either you can connect an existing Stripe account that you already have, or if you need to make a new one, you can do that as well. And it will walk you through all of those steps. Once you are connected, you can always come back to this financials area to go to your Stripe dashboard as like a quick link. You can also click to view your payments or bank transfers or anything like that. Down here in the bottom left-hand corner is where you're gonna find your default invoice note. So we saw how you can change that on a per event basis. However, you likely will have a default note that you're gonna put on those invoices that are gonna be primarily the same across most of your um, accounts. However, you can change that on a per client basis. This is the area where you're just going to make those defaults though. And then of course, this is where you'll also set up those default payments, which is going to be very important um, in relation to, like I said, those scheduling of the email. So I highly recommend that you come in and put a default payment schedule. And then of course, if your client was to make four payments or one payment instead of the three defaults, um, you can absolutely change that on a per event basis as well. Next, you're going to go over into your email settings area, and this is where you're going to find all of the information um, for your invoice emails. So this is where you're going to find all of the information, um, just like we saw on the pre-event basis, as far as your company info that's going to show up on the email, your email from and reply to email addresses and names. And then on the left-hand side is where you're going to be able to change out that information um, on the left-hand side here for your emails. And then, of course, you have your email list. 
And this is where you're going to be able to um, see all of the emails that were sent across your entire company. So um, if I wanted to see all of the ones that were just sent to this person, or maybe you are um, having all of your salespeople put their own email address in there as the from email, and you want to see all of the emails that Susie on your team has sent out, you can do that here as well. Um, you'll also be able to see that overview of analytics in the top left-hand corner, so you can filter this by, I want to see all of the ones where they clicked or all the ones where they opened. Um, if I had errors, how many of those were there? Um, and you can go ahead and see all of that information here on a company level. All right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and open the floor to see if anybody has any questions on any of these new features. And you can turn your mics off or you can put them into the chat, whichever you would prefer. And I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to do that. Um, I do also want to mention that I will be sending this in a follow up email. There's going to be a full video that you can rewatch at any time. I'm also going to include the links and information about connecting with Stripe. So if there's anybody in here that's not already connected with Stripe, you can go ahead and read up on those knowledge base articles that I'll be including in the follow up email. But you can also schedule a time with me. So if you have any questions and you want to do like a one on one, um, we're absolutely open to doing that as well. The best way that you can do that is going to be from the main menu under support on the contact us area. And over here on the left hand side, you're going to see that button to schedule a support call and you'll be able to schedule that call there. All right, anybody with any questions. If not, that's perfectly fine. We can go ahead and wrap it up a little bit early here. Um, but overall, I hope that everybody enjoyed learning more about these features. I also want to mention that in addition to these features that you currently have right now, there are tons of other features that are currently in the works that we're going to be implementing over the next several months through the end of the year um, and maybe even into a little bit of next. So uh, a lot of really fun, exciting features that are going to be present in here. We're going to be offering things like um, the ability, uh, ability to add tips or the ability to take ACH payments, um, client portals where people can log in and see all their information, like their invoice and their proposal and all of that information. Um, tons and tons and tons of new stuff that's going to be coming out in this area soon. So if you're not already connected, now's a really great time to go ahead and do that before all of that information starts coming out. So that way you will get them gradually and you know be familiar with them as they come out. All right. Well, it looks like I'm going to go ahead and end it a little early today then. Um, if anybody does have any questions, like I said, you can always reach out to us, schedule a call with us, um, respond back to the email follow-up that we're going to be sending out, but I hope that you all learned a lot today, and I thank you for joining me on this Wednesday. Hope you all have a fabulous rest of your week.